Welcome to the Global Symposium for Regulators, GSR 23, which is happening in Sham el-Sheikh in Egypt, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio now by Mr. Mario Manovich, who is the Director of the Radio Communication Bureau for ITU. Mario, it's great to have you in the studio. My pleasure. Now, um, in fact, last time we were here together uh, was at the World Radio Communication Conference, actually, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, is happening again this year. We'll, we'll come back to that in a little moment. Uh, but I wanted to ask you, you're here, obviously you've taken the time to be here at GSR as well, um, and your know, radio communications as opposed to development, but there seems to be quite a lot of crossover. A lot of the conversations here are happening about Spectrum. Uh, I wanted to, to find out uh, what uh, your impressions were of this uh, particular event and, and why it's important for you to be here. And also we could talk about uh, the upcoming events as well. Well, the GSR continues to gather all the regulators around the world. So it is of utmost importance that we, we be here um, as uh, regulators are the ultimate decision makers at the World Radio Communication Conference. But it's not only about the decisions about the, in the conference itself. It's also about the way in which you regulate, uh, in which you allocate spectrum in your countries, in which you manage that spectrum, in which you make it um, the best way possible for the for the benefit of the people and the citizens of, of the given country and around the world. So uh, it's uh, it's been very helpful uh, to discuss with them these days. Uh, there has been a specific session on Spectrum for the future, as you know, and uh, it was an interesting discussion because of obviously all the um, segments of the industry are pushing for their own uh, needs for Spectrum, but also there was a good discussion about the regulators' priorities and what they should be focusing on in the future and not to uh, not to forget the new topic about space sustainability that also has to do with spectrum and orbital resources and this is a new topic that has added to the overall discussion to the global discussion on this now i know there's lots of preparatory meetings happening for wrc but do you think this will kind of focus uh, as well uh, some of the conversations there well at least it sensitizes the regulators on the issues that are at hand uh, normally, the ones that attend the preparatory meetings for WRC are the technical people and more, uh, let's say, focused on, on spectrum-related matters. But the regulators are the, the ones that are taking the political uh, approaches. So it's important that they also be somehow sensitized on the importance of the decisions they are about to take. And there's also industry here as well. And it's a number of interesting conversations that are happening here. As well. Absolutely. The industry is key in ITU, as you know, and we have them as members, differently from other UN organizations. And in particular, in the ITUR, I mean, in the R sector, we need them. Uh, most of the standards that we develop, most of the studies that we carry out in order to see spectrum compatibility and possibilities of sharing and all that are carried out uh, with the help of the industry. And uh, then they have to also own the results of the conference for them to be compliant and for them to be supportive. So we, they are a key player in, in our work, uh, for sure. Now, I couldn't have you in the studio without allowing you to give a, a quick plug uh, for the World Radio Communication Conference coming up. Perhaps you could tell, tell our viewers or our listeners, uh, depending if they're watching this as a video or listening to it as, as a podcast, what they could expect. Well... Um, if they've been or they've uh, learned about the WRC 19 here in Sharm Sheikh that you evoked at the beginning, WRC 23 is promising to be even larger uh, with more uh, participants than in, in 2019. We will have also great hosts this time, the United Arab Emirates, and they are legendary for their uh, capacity to, to host uh, big meetings of the ITU and uh, also to be great, uh, let's say, uh, to provide great hospitality uh, for the participant. But uh, regarding the content, um, it is uh, as challenging or even more challenging than the one that we had in, in uh, 2019. Um, there are many controversial issues that are still uh, not uh, uh, agreed upon. I think uh, the COVID uh, period uh, wasn't very helpful in that regard because we had at least two years where discussions were uh, limited to the uh, online uh, discussions. As you know, online discussions are, are all formal discussions. So all the corridor talk and all the uh, you know, social interaction that leads to the um, compromising and to the agreement of solutions couldn't be made during those two years. So we are short of time in order to make those happen. But this last year that uh, we came back to normal meetings and people are seeing each other again, 
uh, have proven to be very helpful and uh, things have advanced. There is yet uh, a lot to do for the conference. I trust that these months uh, in the lead up to the conference will continue to show uh, progress in these uh, topics, but uh, I'm sure that the conference itself uh, will be a very hot one. Now, you're in your second term as Radio Communication Director here. I just wanted to find out um, how has the, the year been so far for you? Well, um, you know, once you are re-elected, uh, on one side you feel uh, reconforted by the trust of the membership and by the, let's say, uh, recognition that you, what you've done in the first period was well done. But then in the R sector in particular, you are put immediately on the, on, on the run because the conference is coming. So it's the next conference after the PP is the WRC. So I didn't have much time to, to enjoy <laughs> the results of the PP. And I had to put my hands at, at work immediately for the conference. But uh, uh, I, I think that there were important improvements uh, in the way the R sector works. In particular, one of my pillars uh, for the first mandate and continues to be this time is to have more and more developing countries join the ITUR uh, in their work and benefit from the work of the ITUR. So in the past, as you know, there were very few of them and uh, mostly developed countries that were part of the R uh, sector activities. Now there are more and more developing countries, so the conversation has become global. Uh, it's, uh, it's for the benefit of all. And at the end of the day, what we are here to do in ITU is to connect everybody. So uh, that helps that uh, objective. Absolutely. Well, Mario Manovic, thank you so much for joining us in the studio today and look forward to catching up with you again very soon. Indeed. Absolutely. My pleasure. Well, thank you. Thank you. Excellent. And uh, do remember that we have plenty of interviews for GSR23 and, uh, and others on our YouTube channel, as well as our podcast channels as well. So do check in on those. And uh, if you've got needs for more information, go to www.itu.int. Thank you very much. <laughs>